We Thank welcome you. each and every one. We welcome each and every one for this night, Pooja. As we come before the Lord, we want to thank and praise Him for this beautiful day, for the week that we have had, with all the graces and blessings that we have received. No matter what the situation was, He was always there with us. We want to thank the Lord. And according to 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16 to 18, Rejoice always, pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So let us all give thanks by singing. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Lord. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ to some. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus is the and now let the weak say I am strong let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us and According to 1 Chronicles 16 34, O oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. And we know our Lord is good. God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, his light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, his light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. If you're walking through the valley and there are shadows all around, do not fear, he will guide you. He will keep you safe and sound. He has promised to never leave you or forsake you. And his word is true. God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this call of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, his light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. We were sinners and so unworthy. So for us, he chose to die. Filled us with his Holy Spirit. Now we can stand and testify that his love 
is everlasting and his mercies they will never end god is good all the time he put a song of praise in this heart of mine god is good all the time through the darkest night his light will shine god is good God is good all the time. Well, God is good all the time. Yes, Lord, you are good all the time. And all the time you are good. And you are great, O oh Lord. For you give us life and you give us your love. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope okay. and you uh -huh. restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. Was it your Your love is better than life. My lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live. And in your name, I will lift up my hands. We are together again. Just praising the Lord. We're together again. In one accord. Something good is going to happen. Something good is in store. We're together again. Just praising the Lord. We're together again. Just praising the Lord. We're together again. And just praising the Lord. Thank you, Lord, and we praise you, Lord, and the Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. We call on the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, as we call upon you this very night, as we believe in the scriptures of our Lord, and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Yes, Lord, the Holy Spirit is a gift to us. Let us treasure the gift that you have given us. Oh, Lord, I love you forever. Oh, you have always been my friend. 
Yes, I will love you forever and follow you until the end. You laid your life down on the altar. You and your hostility. You drank the cup of the Father. While I was still your enemy, when I was far away, you found me. When I was broken in my sin, you brought your spirit upon me and put a new heart within. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit on me. Jesus, pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit, spirit. on me. Oh, me, my life burn as an offering that is pleasing unto thee. I'll count it joy to share your suffering that your life may flow from me. Yes, I will be forever grateful for you always by my side. I will proclaim that you are faithful and you're returning for a bride. Pour out your spirit, pour out your spirit, pour out your spirit on me. Jesus, pour out your spirit, pour out your spirit, pour out your spirit on me. Pour out your spirit, pour out your spirit, pour out your spirit on us. Jesus, pour out your spirit, pour out your spirit, pour out your spirit on us. Holy Spirit, rain down, rain down. Holy Spirit, rain down, rain down. Oh, Comforter. And friend, how we need your touch again, Holy Spirit, rain down, rain down. Let your power fall, let your voice be heard. Come and change our hearts as we stand on your word. Holy Spirit, rain down, rain down. Holy Spirit, rain down, rain down. Holy Spirit, rain down, 
Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, come with your fire. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, come with your fire. Holy Spirit, come with your fire. Holy Spirit, come with your fire. Come, Holy Spirit, let your fire fall. Come, Holy Spirit. Let your fire fall, let your fire fall, let your fire fall. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, purify my heart. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, purify my heart. Holy Spirit, purify my heart. Holy Spirit, purify my heart. Come, Holy Spirit, let your fire fall. Come, Holy Spirit. Let your fire fall, let your fire fall, let your fire fall. Thank you, Lord, and praise you, Lord. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for coming upon us right now. And in this night, you are blessing and anointing us. As Lord, it gives us great pleasure, Lord, to worship you. For you are the mighty one. You are the holy one. Lord, according to John 4.24, God is spirit and his worshippers must worship in the spirit and in truth. And now it is the time O oh Lord, to worship you. Come, now is the time to worship me. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship Come, just as you are before your God. Come, one day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. 
Now is the time to worship. Uh -huh. Now is the time to give your heart. Uh -huh. Just as you want to worship. Uh -huh. Just as you were before your uh -huh. Yes, Lord, as we feel your presence right now, O Lord, we worship you. We praise you, O Lord, as we enter the Holy of Holies. I enter the Holy of Holies. I enter through the blood of the Lamb. I enter to worship you only. I enter to honor I am. Lord, I worship you. I worship you, Lord, I worship you, I worship you, oh, your name is holy, holy. For oh, your name is holy, holy, Lord. For oh, your name is Jesus, Jesus, Lord. For oh, your name is Jesus. Let's close our eyes and lift our hands up and 
call on his name. Yeshu, my beloved is the most beautiful. My beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands. My beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands. Yes, let's call on our name, our Lord name, Yeshu. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Mishu and Kathy, for the beautiful praise and worship. We welcome Father Renald. Good evening, Father Renald. Hi, good evening. God bless you. Good evening, brother Father. Very happy to join your group. Same year, Father. Happy to have you here with us, Father, today. Thank for you. For your blessings, especially for the new year. Yes. Thank you, Father. We'll pray. Yeah. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Amen. Spirit. Amen. Loving Lord Jesus, as we have praise you together as one family joining from different parts of the world and places. Your name unites us and we are sure, Lord, confident, Lord, you are dwelling on our praises, Lord. You dwell on the praises of your people and you are Holy Spirit is hovering upon us as tongues on fire. Thank you, Jesus, for filling us with your wisdom. Unless you invited us, Lord, we would not come here. Unless you graced us, we would not be here, Lord. And each one of us present here has been graced to come here. 
not on our own merit. It is by the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. My dear friends, it's a joy to be with you, you know, to uh, share God's blessings. Definitely, 100% be assured Jesus is present in this platform because he has assured if we are gathered in his name, he is there. Amen. He is there and he is very much alive in this group. Okay. Just to uh, give a put to put this prayer meeting into perspective, we are in the season of Lent and um, I'm sure you have somebody might have told about or read Pope's message for the, this Lent is journey is a journey in the desert towards freedom. A journey through the desert uh, towards freedom. <clears throat> there he says it is a desert experience. Lent is a desert experience and we are all going through it. Tough times sometimes. But we are going from point A to point B. So point A was a place which was, we were we were uh, in bondage. Like he gives an example of Israelites under the Egyptian slavery. <clears throat> Israelites were in slavery and God took initiative to bring them out and he brought them out with a lot of signs and wonders. Midway, people started complaining. To Moses and the Lord. Why did you bring us here to die here? Did we not enjoy the, the, the onions of Egypt, the garlic, the flesh pots? The... So many of them turned back. Many of them were lingering. Though they were physically present, they were going back to that uh, old phase of life. Whereas <clears throat> some of them went ahead. Some of them went ahead and uh, going towards the promised land. My dear friends, as we are in the first week of the Lent, <clears throat> we too, each of us, there's no doubt, each of us, everyone has sinned and fallen short of God's glory. Each of us has a past. We too were in some type of slavery, some type of a uh, um, uh, distancing from the Lord, so evil practices, or even a human relationship. And from there, the Lord has pulled us, drawn us, allured us, allured us, enticed us, seduced us to this beautiful land. Pope Francis will say, <coughs> uh, God will shape his people. He will enable us to leave our slavery behind and experience a a changeover from death to new life. And he also says, it will be a first place of a, a love where in Prophet Hosea, he allured us where we experience our first love, the first love of Jesus, of God. So my dear friends, I invite you once again to this beautiful time of grace, you know, <clears throat> to come from point A to point B, from death to life, from past to present new life. I end with this with a, with a story, small story, which I heard uh, recently, it was interesting. I think it's from Tony DeMello, <clears throat> where a bird was suffering a scorching heat in a desert. It was scorching heat, it was trying to survive. By chance, it, it held on a, a, a plant, a, a branch of a cactus and he thought to himself yay i got something to hold on <clears throat> god please save me thank you for giving this place <clears throat> just be just so no sooner than it said a, a strong wind blew it away blew it away away from and it said to say, oh god why you are giving you trouble after trouble and the wind was so hot it it rolled over the desert, the scorching uh, the, you know, heat of the sand. 
It almost dead. It was almost like dead. Again, the wind was blowing upon the bird, and the bird was thrown out from the place to elsewhere, far away, and it was almost crushed to, you know, into unconsciousness. But when he, when it, after some time, when it opened its eyes, he couldn't believe. It found itself in an oasis, full of green, full of fruits, new friends, birds chirping, out of living uh, life there, and it said to itself, "Oh wow, I am in much better place, a new place, a new life, a new beginning." And it said it was a journey, a tough journey but I am in a beautiful place. So dear friends, we all must go through this 40 days of Lent, <clears throat> through this rough and tough journey. When the going gets tough, only the tough get going. So we will indeed, after 40 days, will come to an oasis full of life that is called Easter, where you and I will experience beautiful freedom. So the moral is lahe raho, keep press forward, never turn turn back. Even if you fall, even if you fall, God's hand is there to lift you up and take it out again. Not just once, a thousand times, even if you fall, ten thousand times he will lift you up without any kind of a, a feeling let down. Okay, so I wish you all the best. May God bless you all. May uh, God uh, be with you in this beautiful journey. Pray for me as I also show my prayers, especially in my morning mass um, in a college tomorrow. Thank you. May Almighty God bless you. The yes, Father, the Holy Spirit. The and the Holy Spirit. Spirit Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank Amen. you, Father. Thank you, Father Reynolds. Assure, assure you of our prayers for you too, Father, at the night intercession hour. Thank you. Pray for Lord, the Lord was touching that person and that pain is going to subside and is going to disappear very soon. That's what the Lord was showing with that time. Brother and sister, before we start, let us say a short prayer. Yes. Invoking the Holy Spirit to be with us, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this great and great and mighty day you've given us, this mighty time you've given us, the appointed time, as it is said in John chapter 6, verse 44, unless if you're not drawn by my Heavenly Father, you will not be here. Lord Jesus, you also said, Lord, in Matthew 18, 20, when two or three are gathered in my name, I will be in their midst. Lord Jesus, we know that you are with us, Lord, at this moment. We praise and we glorify you. For you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. Lord Jesus, take control of everyone here, Lord Jesus, at this moment. Lord Jesus, it is your appointed time and you have called everyone, Lord, to be here at this moment. To the intercession of our Blessed Mother, we'll say one Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, 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 and when the, when the Pharisees approached Jesus and they're asking him about the law, and, uh, you know, he said in reply in chapter 19, I will not read from the beginning the Creator made them male and female, and said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Uh, the two shall become one flesh is so important in our lives. My brothers and sisters, I would share, uh, this is my 19th year of marriage. I have two sons. And I, and I can tell you with so much of joy and happiness, it's one of the best moments of life which I've ever experienced as a married life, you know. It's so beautiful. And sometimes, and to be very honest with you, 
is uh, in my ministry why I think the Lord had asked me to speak about marriage. The Holy Spirit is just speaking to me now because I am basically, my ministry is to pray for broken families. And that's what the Lord picks me and people call me because many, 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 many I've come back together, joined together as one because as the Bible says, the Bible says so beautifully that the two shall become one and the two shall become one because when we get married, the third hand on us is the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes upon us, when we are getting married in church, uh, the beauty, the beauty of marriage is, my brothers and sisters, today in life, people, when you invite them for a marriage, they miss the main part of the marriage. They miss the Eucharist celebration of the marriage. They usually come for the reception. And the more priority is given to the reception than for the Eucharist celebration of the marriage. First of all, the Eucharist is such a wonderful thing. When you start speaking with the Eucharist, it will go on and on and on and on because there's so many parts in the Eucharist. And that main part of the Eucharist, when the person is getting married, you know, when the blessing of the marriage is taking place, and that is the time where the Holy Spirit is the hand upon our hands when we're getting married. And that is the time where the Holy Spirit seals us completely as husband and wife. And the pledge which we take, my brothers and sisters, is the pledge of lifetime. It is not a pledge for a short moment. It is a pledge for a lifetime. And I start off the first part of married life I'll, I'll give it in, in, in segregation of different points. The first point of married life for me is your prayer life. If you have your prayer life in control, if you have your prayer life focused, if you have your prayer life laid out straight, if you have your prayer life giving your time to God, I tell you, your marriage is going to be perfect. I'm not going to say, I'm not saying there's not going to be ups and downs. Yes, there are going to be ups. There are going to be downs. There are going to be so many, so many things in life happening. But you have to hold on. And when you hold on, as Father just said, you know, my superior got angry with me. There are many who are going to pull you down. And I'll be speaking a little later on Who's the one who pulls you down the most? That's why I said the prayer life is so, so important in our life. And what are we going to inculcate into our children? If we don't have prayer life in our lives as husband and wife, how can we inculcate into our children? How can the youth be strong in faith? How can the youth know who is Jesus all about? My brothers and sisters, our prayer life, our prayer life, is the, is the summit of our marriage. Because when we sit and pray, there's someone not happy, and that is the evil one. Because the evil one comes to destroy. That's what John chapter 10, 10 tells us. The evil one comes to steal and to destroy, but I come to give you life, life full in abundance. My brothers and sisters, the Lord never said, I've come to give you half-life. I haven't come to give you, okay, just a little bit life. He's, the Lord said, I've come to give you life, life full in abundance. That's the beauty of our Lord. And our marriage also, our marriage is in abundance, our brothers and sisters. We have to spread out to others. We have to spread and we have to keep on invoking God into our lives. The evil one will always come. He'll always come and try to destroy you. But when you have the Lord with you, and when you have this beautiful book, the Bible, the Word of God, I tell you, the evil one cannot do anything to you. Because the evil one is, should be under your feet, is dust under your feet and remain under your feet only. We cannot give the evil one 
and no opportunity to keep coming up. No, it has to be under your feet. And as I always say, my Lord is my hero and I am a zero. Because unless we don't become a zero and make the Lord our hero, there's nothing going to be in our lives. Because the Lord has to be our hero. I cannot say, I have done this today. No, I have not done this today. Without the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, I can't achieve anything in my life. Nothing, even my workplace, nothing. Many will say, oh, today I have done this and I have achieved this in my workplace. We can't achieve anything. I believe in one thing. No matter what I achieve in life, it's every bit is given by our Lord Jesus Christ. And today might be our, might be our partners are there. It's all, it's all come down from heaven. It's everything is there. It is written. And I tell you, my brother and sister, married life is so, 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 so good. I will share with you short about my married life. When, when we got friendly, I told my, my wife, myself, we decided when she's angry, I keep quiet. When I'm angry, she keeps quiet. I said, we're not going to fight. We're going to discuss things later on. And we're into our 19 years of marriage. You can ask, anytime ask both my sons and, and ask them, have you ever seen mommy and daddy fighting? They will tell you no. That's how we kept it. Because we are one body. As the Bible says, we are not separated to become one. And we have to understand each other. And where the problem comes in? The problem comes in when you don't talk, when you have ego, when you have arrogance. And these are the spirits which destroy you. The spirit of egoism, the spirit of arrogance, the spirit of pride that I am better than you, what you are doing. Because there's so many, so many, there's so many incidents which, which happen, which, which I know it's all about, this world is all about money. How much you are earning and how much I am earning. And that's where the marriage is, is going away. My brothers and sisters, let us focus to grow as one. Many think the other side is, the other part is greener. But I tell you, no. Where you are, that's heaven. You have to make it. Nobody else is going to come and make it for you. And the one who can make it for you is only our Lord Jesus Christ and nobody else. Nobody else can make it for you. And we have to move forward. We cannot keep sitting down and say, oh, this is not working out. This is not working out. I need a solution. And that solution only is only and only from our Lord Jesus Christ. We have to keep our Lord as a center. Get up early and start praying. Do not mix up your personal prayers with your family prayers. Your personal prayer is your personal prayer. Your family prayer is coming together as a family and praying. That is so important. That is where the Lord is really, really, I tell you, angels rejoice when the family comes together and pray. Today, ask so many of brothers and sisters, there is no family rosary. There is no family prayer. Everyone sits in one corner and they pray. There's so many who call for prayer, sisters. Even day of yesterday, I was talking to a lady and I, and I was telling her, I said, don't tell me that your husband prays alone and you pray alone and your daughter prays alone. That is all personal prayer. But where is your family prayer? I said, why can't you sit on half an hour together and pray? I said, when you start doing that, I said, things will start changing in the house. Today, we look at the problems, my brothers and sisters. We only look at the problem which is coming our way. But none of us are looking at the beauty what the Lord is doing for us. I will just share something short with you, my, my testimony. I'll just share my testimony with you. 
And uh, the Lord is asking me to do it at this moment. Uh, from 2015, I've been suffering with a rare case of pancreas. And uh, it, it's unknown because pancreas is usually uh, those who are alcoholics. And I don't drink and I don't smoke. And 2015, when it started with me, but it was a tax is to be admitted and come out. And I was okay for two years. But in 2022, uh, in June, what it started, it became very regular, practically every single month. And um, it came into a, a stage where I used to be so much on painkiller because I, I couldn't be admitted because my finance was, uh, it was very expensive and uh, my medical at all was coming to an end. And I was on a lot of medication because I could not take so much of leave from school also. And my rate of the amylase and the, of the pancreas should be within 300. And there was a time where it went up to 16,000. 300 means that's the pain of the pancreas. And you have excess stomach pain, which you cannot bear. You need pain kills injection to take. And mine's also went up to almost 16,000. And uh, I was on painkillers and I was 96 kgs weight. And I came on to almost 72 kgs. And uh, it was destroying me. And But still, I was in prayer. But not so much in prayer because, you know, my focus was more also on my sickness and how things are going to be. And that uh, I need to put a stent in my pancreas. And... I did put a stent in the pancreas and I got discharged. And then the foreign body was not taking to me when I was very uncomfortable. And in the month of February, I had to put a second stent. So I had two stents in my pancreas. And the first stent when I put, my bill came up to almost 2 lakhs 85,000 rupees. And I didn't have that to pay. A 1 lakh 5,000 was paid by my MediClaim and balance I did not have with me. So I just told the doctor, I said, doctor, I don't have so much at this moment. What do I do? I said, and he told me, don't worry, let me see. He said, and in the evening, the doctor came and told me, that's where, why I'm telling you this. It's how God does things for us where we only, we only focus on the things what are going wrong in us. And the junior doctor came and told me in the evening at 5.30 in the evening, so you can go home. Doctor said, he's waved off the one like 80,000 rupees from you, you can go home. And that is where the, where the time I was like in tears, in shock, like how the Lord can come in and talk to the doctor and tell the doctor in his ears, that is my child, let him go home. And I came back home, but I did not finish that time. Again, after one month, the stent got jammed. I had to go for replacement of the stent again. And then there was a lot of trouble going on. And uh, by the grace of God, in the month of July, I did get an opportunity to come to Bangalore. And when I came to Bangalore, I did join prayer groups here. And uh, we have a comm team where I'm a member of the comm team, the Crusaders of Mercy. And uh, we would go out for ministry and go out to logos and do a lot of things. And everything was getting better. And then the to go back to the hospital to my same doctor and uh, because it was a replacement of my stents again. And this time I didn't want any replacement of stents and we were praying. And Father Josh told me from Logos, he told me, Sean, uh, your stents will be taken out, he said, but it will not be replaced back again. And then just one week before, usually I listen to the morning adoration from 6.30 from Father Michael. And I was listening to this adoration and Father Michael just called out my name and he said, Sean, that uh, you have fear in you. You are going for something and you have fear. Don't worry, the Lord has taken it away from you. And uh, I said, yes, good. And I went to the hospital and uh, got myself admitted on the 5th of December in 2020.
R three, and uh, I went alone. Went myself, got myself admitted, and USD doctor will never ever ask. Uh, he just only asks for a USG, and that's it. And he gets things done. And this is the first time he asked for MCRP scans to be done. And uh, I was saying, Lord, are you up to, up to something? I went and got it done. And then junior doctor came and he told me, ah, Sir, you said you had two stents, but there's one stent can't be traced in the scans. Are you sure you had two scans, stents? I said, yes, I had two stents. I said, all glory to God, because only Jesus can do that. Only Jesus can take away things. And then the senior doctor came and told me, sir, we cannot find one stent. And uh, it's okay, he said, we'll remove the other one and see what is the status of your pancreas. I said, okay. And next day at 11 o'clock was my OT. And I went into the OT and I was singing this beautiful uh, song, which I used to always do. It goes like the love of the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit. And I was singing this and I was chanting it. And there were about six patients who were looking at me and they must be wondering, this fellow is really out of his head. Someone coming to the OT is smiling and he's chanting something. I went in and when I came out, I only heard my friend telling me that you have no stents, doctor not placed any stents again. And I was just in very, because I had my anesthesia, so I was really very faint, I could listen to it. And after half an hour, the doctor came and told me, uh, sir, you have no more stents. Your pancreas is, is perfect. It's good. And um, that's it. He said, you can you can go home now. So he said, if you want. And uh, there's no more. It's like, you know, so much of glory to God, you know. And that's why I say, we cannot focus on things that is going on in life, especially in your marriage. You cannot focus on things which are going wrong. Sit and think. And analyze the good things what the Lord is doing for you. The small things what the Lord is doing for you in your marriage. Think about that. My brothers and sisters, thank the Lord because there are so many, so many in this world who haven't yet understood what is marriage. For them, moving around with somebody else is joy. But when you have but when you have that glory of God in you, when you have that Holy Spirit leading you in your marriage, when the Holy Spirit leads you in your marriage, I tell you, my brothers and sisters, how sacred and blessed your marriage is. How blessed your marriage is. Nothing else comes before your marriage. Nothing. You can go any part of the world. The Holy Spirit will be with you. Nothing Nothing can entice you anywhere. You will come back to only your, your, your own partner. I tell you, because prayer, I tell you, it cuts through and breaks mountains. No matter what. And my biggest, biggest strength was my wife. And she always told me, nothing would happen. The Lord is with us. The Lord is with you. Nothing would happen. Nothing going to happen. These were the words to me. And those words were fed to her. It's only by the Holy Spirit. Today, whichever words which we speak, it's only, that's why when I go to work in the morning and when I, when I pray with my children before we, go to, before we go to school or college and before we go to work, my prayers, Holy Spirit, Give us knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Help us do things which you want us to and you speak for us. We do know anything. We are illiterate. Nothing we know. When we depend and put our trust in our Lord Jesus Christ, He will do things for us. We don't have to do anything. He will lead you. And I can see it happening in my life. I can see it when we put our full self in the Lord. We say, Lord, we surrender everything into you. You take care of everything, Lord. Not me. I can't take care of anything. Because you breathe your breath into me. So how can I take care of anything? I can't take care of anything. It's only you have to take care of anything. Today, if I had to plan what I'm going to do, not going to happen. I can't plan. 
It's only we sit in prayer what the Lord gives. And I haven't planned out anything because I know the Lord feeds. The Lord will give. The Lord will do things. My brothers and sisters, so prayer life, as I tell you, it's so, so important to have that prayer moving in your family. I tell you, when you have prayer moving in your family, you will see your you will see miracles, you will see so many things happening which you will wonder, how can it happen with me? How the Lord is loving me so much. And one, one more prayer you must always do. Pray for others. Pray for other marriages. Pray for people who are breaking in their marriage. When you start praying for them, I tell you, you don't have to pray for yourself. Lord will take care. There's somebody who's praying for you. Remember that always. When you pray for somebody, somebody is praying for you. And when you pray, and that's what we have to pray for all our enemies also. When we pray for them, they have to be a transformation. And I tell you, my brothers and sisters, when you pray and when you find any couple coming back together and be union with the Lord together, I tell you, that is the most joyous moment. That is the most, most joyous, joyous moment. There was this young girl who got married and three, she was about 23 years old, very, very close to me. And uh, I went for a wedding also and broke up in three months. In three months, both of them went part ways. And the Lord gave me a beautiful vision and telling me that, you know, that I could see her praying and there was a big mountain behind her and the light was not reaching her. And I told her to me, yes. And the Lord gave me one more message to tell her and told her that, you know, your husband is going to come back in two months. And I told her. Yeah, then she's saying, no way, he's not going to come back in two months. He's not going to come back. I know him better than you, Sean. I said, but I know my Lord better than you, I said. I said, this is what my Lord told me, and I know when the Lord speaks, it's going to happen, I said. So that's what the word says in Isaiah 55, 11. My word which goes or doesn't, doesn't accomplish will not come return back to me. I said, and I know it, I said. And I tell you, my brothers and sisters, not even one and a half month back, the husband and wife was back together. That's the power of the Lord. That's the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I tell you, I was not overjoyed because I prayed, no. I was not overjoyed because the Lord spoke to me, no. I was overjoyed because the family came together. When both of them came together, that was my biggest, biggest joy. And I tell you, that day I was so overjoyed and, you know, with so much of uh, happiness and, and peace in my heart. Yes, there's someone come back together. When you see husband and wife together, that sense of happiness should be in you. My brothers and sisters, the jealousy about my neighbor being better my neighbors, their life is much better than what I am. They have got much more than what I've got. Doesn't matter at all. It doesn't matter at all. You know what I got, sisters and sisters? I am super rich. You look at me, can you make out? I am super rich. Not in money. I am super rich with the power of my mighty God. If you can see him, I am super rich. Because I know His grace is sufficient for me. That's why the Lord prayer is so beautiful. Give us today our daily bread. The Lord never said to pray, give us our weekly or our monthly or our yearly bread. Give us our daily bread. And we should be satisfied in what depth what the Lord gives you. And I tell you, the Lord will give you things when he has to give it to you. When he has to give it to you, he'll give it to you. No matter what. It could be even your child. Maybe after five years or seven years. Because the Lord's time is appointed time. We cannot go 
against it. So do not worry about that. Do not worry about your neighbor. They are doing better. They have a 55 inch TV and I only got a 22 inch TV. Nothing. Don't bother. I tell the Lord, Lord, thank you, Lord, for blessing them more than you bless me. That should be our prayer. Lord, bless them more than you bless me, Lord. My brothers and sisters, money can never buy you happiness. Can never buy you happiness. Yes, but the grace and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ can give you peace of mind and full of love to spread to somebody else. My brothers and sisters, let us not have that ego in us and that jealousy in us as what others are doing. No. If we can be a source of help to somebody, yes, please go. Please be a source of help to somebody else, my brothers and sisters. But let us not envy somebody else. No. Let's not envy somebody else. Especially the marriage or anything. How nicely they're living. How beautifully living. Why can't we be like that? Why can't we do this? And why can't we do that? Why we and how? It should not be. Sit in prayer and ask the Lord, Lord, where we are going wrong? So if anything is happening, how many of us sit in prayer and tell the Lord, Lord, where are we going Lord, wrong, Lord? Please show us, Lord. Please show us the way because we want to follow that way. We don't want to follow our way. I tell you, my brothers and sisters, when we start following our way, we are going to fall. When we follow His way, we're going to walk in the light. And let us not walk in darkness because the darkness is the evil one. Let us walk in the light, in the light of God. My second point is, sister, I know there are many points, I'm not going to finish today, but my second, second point is, is your forgiveness for one another. To be truthful. Do not hide. Do not hide anything. For me is, I tell my wife everything. She tells me everything. No matter what wrong it can be. Do not let a third party come and tell your spouse about you. Because when you speak, when you tell your wife, and when the third party comes and speaks, already she or he knows already what had happened. That's the beauty of marriage. When we are honest and when we are truthful to one another, no matter what it can be, no matter what, what it can be, how bad it can be, the Lord will give you the grace. The Lord will tell you to talk. We have to listen to that voice. This is the time. Speak. You speak. This is the time. Listen. You listen. And to forgive, my brothers and sisters. We have to have that heart to forgive. There are many. Sometimes they get angry. They don't want to talk to one another. And this hatred comes into one another. That's because we don't ask for the gift to forgive. And when we ask for the gift to forgive, and when we see none of us are perfect, the first thing in life, none of us are perfect. We are all imperfect human beings. The only perfect one is our Savior. The only perfect. We are imperfect. And I tell you, today, I always say this, my Lord comes first, then my wife comes. First is my Lord Jesus Christ, then my wife and my family. Because His love is unconditional and our love is conditional. Only our Lord Jesus Christ's love is unconditional and our love is conditional, brothers and sisters. No matter how much you can love your spouse, but how much you can love your children. But it cannot. There's no comparison between our Lord Jesus Christ loving us. Because we are loving two or three members. Our Lord Jesus Christ is loving the whole universe. 
He loves you. When, when I hear testimonies, I love hearing testimonies in the morning. When Father Michael or Father Job is reading the testimonies, oh, I love it. Because there's so many things you hear in the testimony. It's like, I wonder something to myself when I'm, when I'm driving and going to work. I said, Lord, all these things are happening, Lord. I said, so many things you're doing for so many people. I said, it's like, you know, sometimes you cannot even think what the Lord is doing, what the Lord is doing for us. Yeah. So don't have that grudge against your wife or against your husband. Don't have that malice in your heart. Oh, why is the, he's think he's authority of the house or she's authority of the house? No, I should be the one. No, the authority of the house should be our Lord Jesus Christ. He's the head of the family. Not you and me. He's the head of the family. And when when he is the head of the family, oh, you see that family after that. That family is like heaven. But when we take authority that we are the head of the family, then it's over. We have to, have to make as I said, no, the Eucharist is the source and the summit. Jesus Christ for us is the source and summit of our marriage. Without our Lord Jesus Christ, there is nothing. I don't know, there might be who is married more than me, or some might be just married, but I'm just sharing experiences because dealing with so many couples, I'm just sharing experiences with what I hear from others and how things are going. So that's why I'm just sharing the experiences. And the third one is to be, is togetherness, is to spend time together. Yes, we are busy in our work. We are busy in our schedules. And many of, many of us are even online, where work goes on until 12 o'clock in the night, 1 o'clock in the morning, go to sleep, and then morning time we get up tired, and a lot of things happen. As we give time to prayer, we have to give time together to your partner. Time is very, very essential for our partners to share. I tell you, Small things you share, small things you ask, it increases the love for one another. Small things. How was your work today? Last night you went to sleep. You never ate properly and went to sleep. I seen these small, small things really works in marriage. Brothers and sisters. So always spend time together. Be together. Do not be separated. That's where the evil one comes in. He even tells you, no. We speak. We start speaking to y'all. Start, start speaking to us. No. When we are together, when we are with the Lord, and you know when the Lord is our center, spend time together. Spend time together. Go out for some, might be once a week or once every fortnight. Go out together. Spend time together. That's the beauty of togetherness. That is the beauty of marriage. And sacrifice though practically every married couple they do it, is to sacrifice for their children. To sacrifice things for their children. And that is a part of our marriage. That's the part of marriage to see that our children get the best. I mean the best not only material things, the best is also the word of God, the best to know Jesus Christ, the best the rosary, the best the chaplet, the best the novenas to teach our children the best and the best is the word of God. The Eucharist celebration how many of us, sometimes you see small babies, they don't take to church. Why? They will cry, they will disturb. Nonsense. The word of God is more effective on the small ones when they go to church. 
is more effective. Let them shout even if they're small, not a problem. That's the way of them praising God. I believe that way. The children should be taken small, small to church, not when they've grown up and they don't know what is happening. I still remember there was uh, this church in Kerala and um, this child was seven years old when he went for his first Eucharist celebration. And usually in Kerala, they have the church where they have a nursing mother, they have a separate room where they have the glass and they have a speaker and where you can hear. And for that day, the speaker was not working. So this boy was watching only actions. And after the old mass finished, his proud father went and asked him, Son, how did you enjoy the mass? For me, I would always say the Eucharist celebration. So he asked him, how was the mass? And he said, Daddy, it was wonderful. And the boy described the Eucharist celebration to his father. He said, first, Superman came in, referring to the priest. And then two small supermen came beside him to the altar bodies. And then he said, the priest was looking for something, referring to the priest kissing the altar before starting the Eucharist celebration. To cut it short, the boy kept on saying things that the priest was looking out for something, looking out for something. And then he said, at the end, he opened one small refrigerator at the back and he took out something and he gave everybody. And then he said, Tata, bye-bye. And he went away. Now, that is how that boy experienced the Eucharist celebration. That's why from small that as a husband and wife from small infant we should take our children for the Eucharist celebration. Let them we don't participate as 1 Peter 2 9 says so beautifully royal priesthood we are all. We go to go celebrate the mass. If, if we are particip participating in the mass it's of no value. We have to go celebrate the Mass. We are celebrating the Mass with the priest. That's what 1 Peter 2 9 tells us that we are royal priesthood, a holy nation. So we have to celebrate Mass together. That's the meaning how beautiful the Eucharist celebration turns out to be for all of us. My brothers and sisters, let us, when we are going, inculcate into our children prayers, inculcate into the children the Eucharist celebration, inculcate into our children to read the word of God, inculcate the children to explain to them what is the rosary, what is the chaplet, why are we saying it, why Why do we go for Eucharist celebration, because there's so many questions come up with the children nowadays, you have to know to explain to them what and why and how. Why do we recite the rosary? What is the importance of the rosary? Why do we go for Eucharist celebration? What is the importance of the Eucharist celebration? Why do we recite the chaplet? What is the importance of the chaplet? Why do we go for novenas? We have to explain what is Lenten now. There's so many questions come up. My children ask me, what is fasting all about? Why do we fast? It's not in any way. We have to fast. I say, yes, written. But we don't have to give up chicken, we don't have to give up fish, we don't have to give up martin, we don't have to give up this, we don't have to give up that. There's so many questions keep coming up, my brothers and sisters. We have to be equipped to answer them in the right way and tell them what the Lord wants. It's not what we want. It's what the Lord wants us to do. So let us teach our children, my brothers and sisters, let us inculcate into them things which the Lord wants us to do. And we have married, we have to inculcate in the children what our parents have taught us. And some of us, yeah, we're not even taught much from our parents about the faith. We learned it ourselves might be, or the, to some priest, or to some religious, or to some uh, uh, spiritual team, or something. We have learned it. So whatever we have learned, we have to share and we have to impart to our children and to others. That's what we have to do, my brothers and sisters. Because if we don't do it, 
who is going to do it? Brothers and sisters, the final one which I will just, I'll just wind up here because I will not take more time. I've just got four minutes more. And I will end here. Do not entertain the evil one. And the evil one can come in different forms. In different forms. You have to be alert. You have to be vigilant. You have to not only open with both your eyes, you should have four eyes to open. And see. Be vigilant about the evil one. Not to come and destroy you. When you have your crown, when you have your faith in the Lord, when you are strong in prayer life, I tell you, brothers and sisters, nothing can shake you. Nothing can shake you. The evil one cannot even come next to you to touch you. Cannot. You have to be in that prayer. You have to be really in union with God. Then you see your marriage working out. Beautifully it works out, my brothers and sisters. Beautifully it works out. So, before I end, whatever I shared was just what I gathered. These are the experience praying for people and hearing what they go through. And there is still so much, so much to talk about marriage, so much to talk about marriage. And might be some other time when I really get a time again, uh, we'll, we'll do it. But uh, there's so much to talk about marriage, but my only request to, I know, definitely you all are blessed by all uh, my sister, I would love to sing it, but I don't know. My keyboard cannot be heard. I don't know why. My sound card is not working properly today. And my keyboard cannot be heard as well. I also plan to sing two songs, but I just cannot, you know, it's not working to the sound card. It's not coming out. The sound is not coming out. Uh, they have definitely sung for you all uh, a song or something, but I cannot this time. Might be next time. Yes, I'll do it. Brother, without music, it's okay. Just a few lines at least for us. Which song Thank you me. want? Yeah. And any song? song? Love of the Father. Yes, brother. The Love of the Father, yeah. the Grace of Allah, that one? Yes. Yes, brother, yes. The Love of the Father, grace of Allah, Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. Grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, love of the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. The Father, grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all, and not forgetting the intercession of our blessed Mother. Without her, I tell you, we are incomplete. Amen. Praise, the, praise the Lord of Brothers and Sisters. It was so nice being Amen. with you. And uh, maybe sometime I will have my sound card working. It'll be better next time. We'll do some praise and worship. But I just hope that uh, 